Hello everybody, my name is Stephen Cox. I'm the Managing Director of www.sharenavigator.com and we're the company that will help you to make better investment decisions in the stock market. Today's lesson is all about ADRs or otherwise known as American Depository Receipts. And to illustrate what an ADR is, we're going to go straight to Yahoo and we're going to show you what a share price of Bank of Ireland, which is a bank that's floated on the Irish Stock Exchange, and numerous other stock exchanges, and then we're going to compare it to the share price floated on the, the New York Stock Exchange. So in, in front of you now, what you're looking at is the Bank of Ireland share price that's currently traded on the Irish stock markets. And as you can see, it's trading at about 70 cents in euro. Okay. Now what we're going to do now is look on the New York Stock Exchange at the exact same stock trading on the US stock markets and as you as you can see the share price is trading at three dollars seventy two and um, unfortunately an awful lot of people think sometimes that this is a great arbitrage opportunity it's not and they're going to explain to you why right now so what ADRs are folks in very brief are foreign shares that are traded on the New York Stock Exchange it's a vehicle that was created to allow foreign stocks to trade on the U.S. stock markets, okay? So we're going to give you a brief lesson as to why that is and how we come to the different prices as well, okay? So we've already covered that. We've already said that they're non-U.S. companies that can trade on the U.S. stock markets, and they must do this by what they call American depository receipts. So you need to find out a little bit what they are and why they would do so. So why would we do this? Well, ADRs enable U.S. investors to buy shares of foreign companies without having to go through the whole cross-border transaction. They can buy the stocks in U.S. dollars, pay dividends in U.S. dollars, and can be traded like shares of U.S.-based companies. So they're bought and sold on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ like any other U.S.-based company. And it's very cost-effective for investors. That's the whole key to this, that they can... Um, you know, it can be very costly if you want to go through foreign exchanges to buy and sell shares. So for US-based investors, it's cost-effective to buy ADRs of companies. And it's a great way for them to diversify out of their, their own country, if you like. You can buy shares of companies that are based in China, in India, Ireland, as we've just shown you as well. And you don't have to go to the foreign stock exchanges to actually buy the shares. You can do it on the New York Stock Exchange. There's one thing I also want to point out, and this will be um, of interest to European investors as well. Um, you can actually buy the ADR of stocks that you may be interested in. So, for example, you may be interested in Bank of Ireland. You can always buy that on the New York Stock Exchange um, because the cost of transacting and buying and selling stocks in the U.S. stock markets is an awful lot cheaper than it is uh, through your traditional brokers in the U.K. and Ireland and throughout Europe. So, for example, you can buy and sell shares in the U.S. stock market for roughly 10, 10 euro. Um, minimum fees in Ireland and the U.K. are in and around between 10 and, and or between 20 and 30 euro. So, it's a, it's a lot more cost effective to do it through your online broker. Um, examples of Irish ADRs floated on the New York Stock Exchange. We've just picked a couple here. We've picked Ryanair. That would be one you all know. Bank of Ireland, AIB, CRH, Elan, Trinity Biotech. So these are all companies whose shares are also floated on the New York Stock Exchange and um, they would have done this through ADRs, okay? So how do your ADRs work? It's, um, it's pretty simple really. US banks simply purchase a bulk lot of shares of the company. Then the banks bundle the shares into groups and reissues them on the New York Stock Exchange, the American Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ. And they may not do it exactly one for one. So in the case of Bank of Ireland, actually what they did it is one for four. And I'll explain that um, very, very quickly as well in the next slide. So the depository bank sets the ratio of US ADRs per home country share. This ratio can be anything less than or greater than one. And this is done because the banks wish to price them high enough to show that they're valuable and yet low enough that they're valuable for investors. So let's go through the example with, with Bank of Ireland. So we've seen that Bank of Ireland currently trades on um, the Irish stock market at around 77 cents. 
But it also trades on the U.S. stock markets via the ADR at $3.88. This is not a, an arbitrage opportunity. Um, it doesn't mean that it's, it's cheaper to buy it on the, the Irish market. Not at all. The U.S. bank issuer of the Bank of Ireland American Depository Receipt issues them at a ratio of 1 to 4. So let's do the maths on that. So if Bank of Ireland trades on the Irish market at 77 cents in euro, but it also trades on the U.S. markets via the ADR at $3.88. The ADR ratio is 1 to 4. We've already been told that. That means that 4 Irish shares for every 1 ADR. Therefore, you would multiply the Irish share price by 4 and you get €3.08. And the exchange rate at the time I presented these slides was $1.26. So you would multiply three euro and eight cents by 126 and you will get the current share price of 388 and that's how we get our ADR value as such. Yes there may be some arbitrage opportunities in it just to um, exchange rate differentials but they will be so minute they will be closed very 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 quickly by the bigger players in the market. So for the retail investor you will be doing very well to be able to get an arbitrage opportunity. Okay. So that's the next uh, question. Um, we've already really, really explained that. Um, the big boys will be able to get in there a hell of a lot quicker and they'll be minute arbitrage opportunities and it'll be only through uh, currency different differentials. Because the bottom line is, like anything, the laws of supply and demand kick in. It's, if a group of investors see that there's something cheaper um, in, in one stock market than another, uh, they will obviously rush in to buy it and that would close off the opportunity. So what are the benefits of American depository receipts? They're an easy and cost-effective way to buy shares in a foreign company. They save money by reducing administration costs and avoid foreign taxes on each transaction. So for example, you have access to Chinese, Indian, Brazilian stocks, emerging markets. You also get diversification benefits from it. So not only folks, when you're talking about diversification, not only should you be diversifying across industries, you should be looking at diversifying across geographic regions as well. It's very important. From the company's perspective, they get more U.S. exposure, allowing them to tap into the wealthy North American markets. So that's why a company would want to float on the New York Stock Exchange, for example. Another benefit for Irish and European investors, there's no stamp duty associated with investing in shares listed on the U.S. stock market. That's pretty big, folks. That could save you up to 1%. Um, and also, it's much cheaper to buy and sell shares online as well. So that's the benefit of, of using ADRs. What are the downsides? You have political risk. If you've invested in an ADR in a company, for example, in China, India, or Brazil, if there's a problem locally in government, it may affect the share price. And no matter what happens, even though it is sold in the New York Stock Exchange, the share price will be hurt. So you've got exposure to political risk. And obviously, you've got an exchange rate issue here as well. So is the currency of the home country stable? Well, we know China tends to control its currency, so there's not an issue there. Um, but, you know, other foreign markets may not be the same. So remember that ADR shares track the shares in the home country. If a country's currency is devalued, it will trickle down into your ADR. This can result in a big loss, even if the company had been performing well. So just be aware of that, that you do have a currency exposure. But as you know, and Share Navigator can teach you, you can hedge your, your currency exposure risk as well. So in summary, an AER is an American depository receipt. It gives you as an investor an excellent way to diversify your risk geographically. ADRs trade just like stocks, but represent shares of a foreign company trading on a foreign stock exchange. ADR shares float on supply and demand, just like a regular stock, and there are risks associated with buying ADRs, including political risk and exchange rate risk. There are cost-effective benefits with ADRs as well. We've talked about stamp duty, we've talked about um, online trading costs, and we've talked about the costs associated with trying to buy foreign stocks on their exchanges are all reduced through ADRs. So I would like to now just by finishing up show you our website and encourage you to come along and attend some of our free workshops. We'd be delighted to have you on board. We have them run them twice a day and 
we want to build a, an investment community where people can share ideas. So we'd be delighted to have you on board. Thank you for listening and we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.